Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Caper from Furhat Robotics and I'm here to show you our little Valentine's Day social robotics love letter. Uh, it is something you can show someone you love uh, without even you having a robot. Uh, we will be using our SDK installed on your computer. A virtual robot, just like me. And you will be able to customize this love letter to suit you perfectly and in the uh, that doing that you will also learn uh, some stuff about social robotics. So uh, first you call someone over that you love and then you press start. Nice to meet you. You must be Charlie? Yes I am. I am Furhat and Frankie has programmed me to deliver a message to you. You know today is a special day right? Yes it's Valentine's Day. A particular day of the year which can be used for reminding people you love them. Frankie would like to use this moment, or rather, as it seems likely that time is just another dimension, Frankie would like to use, all, moments. To say this, the universe consists of energy and matter, crashing into each other in the snowstorm of existence. Frankie is so grateful, that out of all the infinite possible ways the universe could have arranged itself, it led to this instant. With you two, living spaceships, existing, right next to each other. Happy Valentine's Day. Personally, I think that is a beautiful love letter. Uh, it took me a lot of time to write it, but you can use this one, or you can write your own love letter, or you can customize this one to suit you perfectly. Um, so you would show this uh, to your partner on your screen. And uh, to start off, you will have to have installed and downloaded and installed both the Ferrat SDK uh, and IntelliJ, which is the development environment that we will be using to modify the code. Um, there should be links popping up on screen and also in the description of this video. So you can easily uh, find another video and how to install these things. And then you need to download uh, the, the code for this particular interaction, which you will do at the Ferrat Git, and the link for that will also be uh, on the screen right here and uh, in the description. So you can download the code from GitHub. You can, for instance, uh, download a zip file or use the clone feature if you know how that works. And then we expand that, and then you can drag that code into a, a decent place for it. Uh, after this, you want to open IntelliJ and choose new project from existing sources. In there, you want to find the folder that you just placed in a convenient place and open it and choose Gradle. It should be pre-selected and finish. And now the project will open up. And here is all the code. And the main code will be found inside SRC main Kotlin. And then it's going to be these files here. To run the, the basic interaction, uh, you have to uh, run the SDK. And then you you need to open main.kt and the next to the fun main here there's a little green arrow and you need to press that and choose run main.kt and now the skill will start to run but for anything to happen uh, you need to open the web interface and um, you'll see that uh, there's actually two ways to start this uh, thing from uh, to run. Uh, one is to place a virtual user here because while the uh, virtual robot has a l almost all the capabilities of uh, an actual robot, it cannot see users. It cannot use your webcam. So you can place in a virtual user by double clicking in this area here, or you can just press start. Nice to meet you. You must be Charlie. And then the skill that I showed you before will start to run. Uh, yes, I am. To run the skill again, you just click uh, the little green play button up here in the right-hand corner. And uh, let's take a look at what the code does. 
a threat is always inside a state, a context in the interaction. And it starts out here in the, in the, um, uh, in the idle state. Uh, that's where it starts running. And uh, here is also an init function that sets a couple of things to start up. For instance, the voice. If you want to set your voice, uh, you can do that in the web interface. You can change voices. Uh, there's many different voices here that you can play around with. Uh, you could, for instance, uh, change language if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's many male and female voices. And you can test the voices, uh, for instance, by uh, clicking here. Hello. I am a speaking robot. And uh, you can try out different voices. Currently, it uh, sets uh, this polyneural voice, Matthew, which is a very good voice. And you can change that. If you want to set a voice in the web interface and have it run, you can just comment out uh, this, this code, and you can have your own uh, voice that you set in the web interface. Or you can set it here in the code by changing uh, the name here. Right. So when a user enters, uh, in this case, by you uh, creating a virtual user in the web interface by double clicking in that interaction space that I showed you, uh, or by clicking the start button, uh, then you will end up in this state called start. Uh, by the way, all, uh, all the states here will inherit a state called parent. That means that what's in the parent state uh, all of these states will have those things as well. So the parent state contains this button that just starts the interaction off. It also contains some functions for when users leave. And if uh, someone says a response that uh, that particular state can't handle, it will um, the robot will say, sorry, I didn't get that, and enter back into the state to listen again. Also, if um, it gets no response after a certain period of time, it will enter back into the state, a re-entry. Let's check out the start state, and this will start to make sense pretty quickly. So here is where you can change uh, the names of the people involved. Uh, you might want to set coder name to be your own name. Uh, I've done the opposite here for the interaction that I showed you in the beginning to make sense. Uh, but you set your own name as coder name, and your partner's name that you want to show this interaction to, uh, you set that here as partner name. Uh, just change out the names and it will work out perfectly. So how these states work is that when uh, uh, the robot enters into a state, it will say these things that are in the on entry handler here. Uh, it'll start in this case by making a gesture. Uh, it'll make a big smile with 0 0.6 strength and the duration of 2.5. And you can change these values as you like. And then it will uh, say, nice to meet you. You must be, and the partner name up here. And then it will start to listen. It will listen for certain things. If it hears nothing within a set period of time, normally six, eight seconds, uh, then it will trigger what was in the parent here, uh, the on no response and then it will re-enter. And what happens on the re-entry is what's in this handler. And then it will say, are you partner name? Uh, and if again, no one answers, the re-entry count, then, it'll, then it will re-enter again. And at this point, the re-entry count will be larger than one, and then it will just keep going so that there's no risk of the interaction getting stuck in this state, uh, because we don't want that. Anyway, so it asks, Nice to meet you. You must be partner name. Uh, if someone says yes, or actually yes is a larger uh, intent, uh, we call it. Um, it enc encompasses all kinds of things like yes and yep, sure, yes box. Uh, most ways of saying yes will be caught by this. Uh, I've also added another intent uh, that I wrote, which is called I am. So if someone says, are you partner name? You might answer, I am. And this will not be caught by yes, but I am will catch it. And then this race yes just means that we will uh, approach this as if they had said yes. So that will trigger everything that is in this state. If they say no, 
uh, the interaction will end. Um, you can just play with that or you can add whatever you like in there. Uh, so are you partnering? partner name? Yes. It will make this nice little triple blink gesture and say uh, what's in this box here. And then it will go to special day, which is the next state down here. Um, on the entry here, it'll do a little gesture like this. Again, feel free to change uh, the different parameters of that gesture or move gestures around. Uh, and then it will ask, you know, today's a special day, right? And if they say uh, it's Valentine's Day, uh, there's an example here. If, if they say something that contains the word Valentine's, then this response will trigger. And Fert will say, yes, it is. And then race, yes. So it will start whatever is in this response. Um, so then Fert will say something about Valentine's Day, and then it will move on to Valentine's message. If they say no, it will say, it's Valentine's Day, you silly. And then it will go into this, a particular day of the year, which can be used for reminding people you love them. And then it will go to Valentine's message. And also on anything they say, this is caught down here, this just general on response with no handler will catch anything that's being said. Again, this is to make sure the interaction does not get stuck somewhere and, and just moves along. Uh, so we go down to the last um, state here, Valentine's message. And here is where this longer uh, love letter text is delivered. Uh, most of these things will make sense. Um, this is a gesture. Uh, this kind of wider safe function using the lambdas, uh, it can also contain gestures very easily. It can contain little delays. Uh, you can play around with, with these things. Um, these, uh, this strange punctuation is what I've played with, makes the sentence sound the best. Again, you can play around with that. Or if you want to have another voice, uh, you can change that. Uh, you might want to create your own states uh, to have maybe some in-joke between you and uh, this person you love. Uh, then you can uh, go in and, and, and sort that out. I'll show you in an intent the I am here. It uh, contains uh, just some examples of what is that way of answering. Actually, I see now that I should have had Valentine's up there in the general. Uh, we could fix that as well. I can use this intent for Valentine's. Uh, then I would just change it to look like this. On response, uh, Valentine's. And now I will use that intent and not just the text. Both ways are, are functional. Okay, uh, if we're gonna take a look at these gestures, the triple blink, for instance, is defined here in the gestures. Uh, it's a particular system with frames where this these things happen at 0 0.1 seconds in, at 0 0.3 seconds in, and you can change different parameters. IntelliJ has code completion, so if you wanna make your own gestures and play around with that, uh, you can just type in, you can copy paste gestures and uh, type into basic params and then you can see all the kinds of things that you could put into a gesture. You can have where the robot is looking with its eyes um, or with its head. You can have blinking, you can change the eyebrows. Uh, you can express different emotions, anger, disgust, fear. Um, maybe not the right thing for a love letter, but whatever uh, takes your fancy. Um, yeah, you can play around with this if you like. Um, try to create your own little gestures that are more advanced. Uh, all in all, if you are new to programming, you might just want to change out your names in, um, in these variables here and just run the interaction as it is. I'm pretty sure your loved one will be very happy to experience this. Uh, if you know a lot of programming, you might want to completely rewrite 
this whole thing and play around and experiment and create your own epic, huge interactive experience. You can find a lot of information in the docs at docs.ferhat.io. And also I recommend using that code completion to figure out uh, what else you can affect in different functions. Uh, I really hope you will have as much fun playing with the Ferret SDK as I have. And um, the virtual Ferret in your computer is really quite a powerful thing. It can understand complex things. You can have a conversation with it if you write the skill well. And um, have a really, really lovely Valentine's Day. <laughs>